Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Gravitas stainless steel pocket pen. And a word of warning, if you put this pen in your pocket, you should ensure you're wearing both a belt and suspenders unless you want to invoke a new fashion trend. I'm sure that this designer spent literally hours creating saggy pants. Absurd. So sexy, Christian, yeah. We made fun of saggy pants for a reason. Do not reclaim them. Do not bring them back. I'm not going to wear low rise jeans. You're not going to sag your pants. We're all going to be civilized. Pull up your pants and do some charity. Yes, the stainless steel pen is hefty, but it's worth carrying in your shorts because it makes an excellent weapon for emergencies as a glass breaker or for self-defense, either by gripping it tightly in your fist for hand-to-hand -hand combat, or if your assailant has done any demographic research at all, they will leave you alone knowing that if you are carrying a fountain pen, you're old and broke and not worth money. This pocket pen is also unusual because where most pocket pens usually carry a smaller nib, this one has one of the new Jinhao number no. 8 size stainless steel nibs installed. Let's take a look at this skull cracker of a pen right now. You may have seen that I was a, uh, a guest podcast co-host with Yoast Applebaum on Applebaum Bites. And during the first, or just before the first broadcast that I did, it was just after the Dutch pen show, and a couple of people poked their heads into the camera behind Yoast to say hi. And one of them was Ben Walsh of Gravitas Pens, and I was all excited to meet him. I said, I love your pens, I love your pens, I haven't got one. So he said, give me your address and I'll send you one. So this was my surprise today. So there's two exciting pens right there a Gravitas pen cleaning cloth, and a card from Gravitas. This is the one that I asked for. And there it is. Look at this, folks. This is stainless steel. has the Gravitas logo right there. A little flat spot so it doesn't roll off your desk. But this is a pocket pen. And there it is. And I asked specifically for a number eight Jinhao nib. I first saw these on Doodlebud's YouTube channel and I immediately put one in my cart, but Ben sent me this one. Isn't that great? I'll show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I'm noticing on Ben's Gravitas website right now that the Jinhao number eight size nib is no longer an option. Perhaps he's had issues with them. I know I love the one that's on this pen. But by all means, contact Ben and ask him if he can put a number 8 size Jinhao on yours because I love the look and the feel of the big nib on this hefty steel pen. And here is Ben's contact information on Instagram and on the web. Overall, this pen is indeed pocket-sized when it's capped. Here it is next to my favorite pocket pen, the Pilot E95S. When posted, they are both good-sized pens. The big difference is the weight, of course. The Gravitas weighs a full 64 grams, where the Pilot only weighs 15. And that's because this is stainless steel and very thick, whereas this is mostly plastic. My iPhone 13 Pro, which is what I'm using to shoot this video, has a frame made of stainless steel and is fairly hefty. The new iPhone 15 Pro that just came out last Tuesday has switched to titanium, which is lighter and stronger than stainless steel. You can get this Gravitas pocket pen in titanium as well. It's a little more expensive at 130 euros, but it might well be an option for you if you find this pen is too heavy. Ben also makes this pen available in a large selection of other colors and materials. Check out his website for all the designs and availability. Please remember that Ben is an independent pen maker and doesn't have the capacity of a Pilot or a Lamy. So let's look at this pen. From the top, we see a very sharp pointed finial. There was actually a slight burr on the end of this one, so I polished it down a bit with some micromesh just to take off the sharp point. The stainless steel cap curves up and has a flat machined into it on the back to act as a roll stop. The cap is actually more than half the weight of this pen. The cap then starts to curve back down to the barrel, and the end of the cap has the Gravitas logo laser etched into it. There's a slight step down to the barrel, which has a very slight taper down to a matching pointed end finial. This one isn't as sharp. The cap unscrews with one and a half turns, 
to reveal a long tapering stainless steel section that has a flare towards the number 8 size Jinhao steel fine nib and black plastic feed. The section has a machined texture that makes it very grippy and comfortable and these cap threads here aren't sharp at all. There's a silicone o-ring in a channel at the back of the section that helps keep the cap from unscrewing during use. It also makes the pen difficult to open if you screw that cap all the way down. If you give it a full turn like that then uncapping it becomes a little bit more difficult. So I just tend to turn it and then just give it a slight twist and it makes it quicker to uncap. And let's get a closer look at this nib. It has all the markings of the first version of the Jinhao number no. 8 size steel nib. The nib and feet are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or swapping. The newer Jinhao number no. 8 size steel nibs in medium have a different nib unit and will not work with this pen. The section unscrews and this is a cartridge only fountain pen. I've syringe filled a standard international cartridge with my own ink here. And there's a silicone o-ring right there to help keep that barrel from unscrewing during use the cap posts deeply and securely and is required to make the pen usable and the pen is perfectly balanced in the hand with the cap posted posting the pen does leave an abrasion on the stainless steel barrel right here you can see it but this is to be expected this pen is designed to be a workhorse so it's going to get scuffs and scars with use. Unposted, the pen isn't really usable, again as to be expected. The stainless steel version of the pocket pen sells for 105 euros on the Gravitas website, with the titanium version going up to 120 euros. For the precision of these handmade pens, I think that's reasonable. And Ben has versions of this pen in copper, brass, and Ultem plastic as well. And the Ultem version is an eyedropper. I should mention that the stock nib that comes with this pen is a Yovo number no. 6 size steel nib available in EF, F, M, B, and 1.5 stud and also in an extra fine titanium flex nib for 15 euros more. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Gravitas stainless steel pocket pen with a Pilot E95S, a Moonman RS1 titanium, a Caveco Sport, in plastic and a Lanby 2 3062 in copper. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. These are all steel nibs except for the Pilot which is a 14 karat gold nib. And the Moonman RS1 is in titanium which I anodized uh, to get those lovely colors in it. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. I'd say all of these pens are frankly unusable unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Gravitas Stainless steel pocket pen. And it has a number eight size Jinhao steel fine nib. Let's check the wetness. Well, this is nicely wet. And I've not done anything to this nib at all. And it's very, very smooth with just a hint of feedback which I think is perfect. I think Ben smoothed this nib because I've never felt a Chinese fine nib feel this smooth or this juicy or this thick before. I was actually concerned when the section wouldn't accept the Jinhao number no. 8 medium nib thinking that I'd have to pull the fine nib right from the unit here and pull the medium out of that nib unit to swap them because the nibs are exactly the same size it's the nib unit that has a different threading system on it for the newer ones but it turns out I didn't need to do that because this fine nib is thicker than any Chinese fine nib I've ever experienced and I like it a lot and the ink today is a Roshizuku Konpeki my favorite blue 
and what I syringed filled into that standard international cartridge, just like I do in my Pilot E95S. As to line variation, well, there isn't a lot. You can push out a little bit, but this is a stiff Chinese steel nib. And the nib makes a 0 0.5 millimeter thick line on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below, uh, which makes it a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. And that is a Western fine, not an Eastern fine, which is really surprising. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, it's not scratchy, but there's a lot more feedback. A lot thinner and a lot drier. And some quick writing. No issues at all. That was me missing the page. So what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? Well, I like a lot about this pen. The nib is big, super smooth, and really juicy wet. And the grip section is grippy and comfortable. Even though the pen is heavy at 64 grams, the balance is perfectly tuned. So it lays in your hand beautifully. This definitely confirms my suspicions that the comfort of a pen in the hand comes down to the ergonomic shape and weight distribution. How else would I be able to think that both of these pens, this slender and light E95S from Pilot and the hefty and thick Gravitas stainless steel pocket pen would both feel so awesome in my hand. I love the roll stop and the silicone o-rings that keep the pen from unscrewing itself during use. There are two issues that you should consider about this pen, however. Do you mind the inevitable scuffing that will occur during regular use? And the extra attention to how much you screw the cap down when closing the pen. I think the scuffing is expected given the nature of this pen and the material. As to the o-ring, perhaps the o-ring should be a smaller gauge silicone so it doesn't do a death grip on the cap. Instinctively used the Vulcan death grip. Captain is dead. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Ben Walsh of Gravitas Pens for providing this beautiful fountain pen for review. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote <laughs>